Good morning. I'm Victoria Jones and I'm a senior digital engineer on the East West Rail Phase 2 project. I'm going to be talking to you today about how I brought Fuser to the project, some of the challenges faced and how the software has been a success in providing highly detailed construction sequences and 4D models for programme validation. I'm also going to talk about the highly detailed images that can be generated as a result, its excellent VR capability along with its viewer generator which allowed for other members of the team to view and interact with the model without any additional software. First though, I'll quickly provide some background on East West Rail, which is a major project to establish a strategic railway connecting East Anglia with Central, Southern and Western England. In particular, building a line connecting Oxford and Cambridge via Bristol, Milton Keynes and Bedford using the track bed as the form of Arsenal Line, which has been out of service for many years. I work as part of the delivery team on Section 3C, which is responsible for dismantling the Bletchley flyover, which is a reinforced concrete railway viaduct built in 1959 to carry the form of Arsenal Line over the West Coast Main Line in Bletchley. So I certainly wasn't the first person to be using Fuser within Anglo Rock. Um, the first time I encountered Fuser was at an in-house digital engineering event where the software was being showcased for its straight or forward VR capability. I was really impressed with how easy it seemed to be to bring the model directly into Fuser and be immersed in VR at the click of a button. I could see its potential for stakeholder engagement along with conveying safety messages clearly to the site teams in a fun and engaging manner. However, upon receiving the license and having a bit of a play with the software, I soon realised that it had potential to do um, substantially more. However, after speaking with a colleague showcasing the event, I knew that there would be some challenges in terms of the format of the design models in the project and creating a viable workflow, uh, particularly with this being a, a rail project and not a um, sort of traditional uh, construction project. So rail projects traditionally use the Bentley suite of software whose outputs are in a VGM format and I knew that Fuser had bi-directional associativity with uh, a range of Autodesk and Graphisoft software, but it didn't work directly with any of the Bentley outputs. However, the DE team had previously ironed out the process of converting DGM files to IFT and importing these into Revit. The surveying team had also created their digital terrain models in DWG format, which could also be brought into Revit very easily and cleanly and uh, converted into a topo surface. The project already utilised a range of modelling software and it soon became clear that these could be used to create an effective workflow for fuser outputs. In the first instance, an IFC was created from the APIS team or microstation model, which could be imported directly into Revit. However, there were issues where some of the geometry had faces missing or cuts were coming through the side. Using Arcad's excellent IFC export capabilities, the broken models could be fixed and exported again as IFC to be used within Revit. There was also the ability to utilise Arcad to generate the fuser models, but the cost code tools at this particular point in time were required initially. Once the model was set up within Revit, it was a simple process to generate the Fuser model. Uh, because Fuser accepts SDX and SKP files so readily, uh, it was so easy to model any components that weren't available within the Fuser standard library, which is, which is pretty comprehensive to be fair. I used SketchUp and 3ds Max predominantly to create additional models, um, and there was a wealth of models available within 3D Warehouse, which was incredibly useful. Uh, with this being a large linear project, context modeling was key to add that extra realism and detail. Uh, initially, I used the Revit tools to generate a 3D OS map based on LiDAR information, but creating modes was awkward and fiddly. However, after discovering InfoWorks ability to export to SDX format, I rapidly created a large context tile containing road infrastructure and dropped it directly into my fusion model. This was key as some of the sequence animations with a local authority to show how the dismantled 400 ton sections of bridge would be transported um, around the town of Bletchley. So it, it does make it sound like you have to be a, a modelling expert, but I can assure you you don't. Um, it was really, really straightforward to create um, the additional components needed. But the ones that we didn't model, we were able to find in um, 3D Warehouse um, very easily. And also uh, the team at Fuser helped out with the, uh, a couple of items too. So I'm going to show you some of the animations that I've generated for the project so far. Um, this is by no means a complete uh, collection. Uh, I've had to shorten them right down as some were particularly lengthy, um, but this particular animation was from the first fuser model that I created, uh, which was a pretty small footprint of the flyover. One of the early tasks of the bridge dismantling was to remove the parapet barriers, um, and there was no detailed program as such at this point, so the software was used purely to just create a quick animation which could be utilised to give the team and the client a good understanding of the process. I was also able to export these animations to an executable file format and along with the clear instructions included within the model itself, this allowed the design team to use the model to view the procedure 
at different angles and at different times. They were also able to take measurements and annotate, which was particularly useful where the clearance along the, uh, the, clearance along the bridge was so important. Unfortunately, I've got no music for this, but uh, okay. So this particular uh, video extract was created to show the sequence of the new OLE installation, the overhead line electrification, and the software was absolutely key to showing the exact procedure where track possession meant that time was of the essence. Um, some of the plant used were standard components within the fuser library, which were incredibly easy to use. As um, Grace demonstrated, the, the grab function is, is, um, is one of the most useful animation tools within this software. But the ease that you can actually animate non-fuser items as well meant this, this fuser really is my go-to software for, for quick animation. Uh, this particular video was used many times on site to make sure the teams knew exactly which lines had activities that ran concurrently. Uh, the fact that it was exportable as an MP4 or could be viewed as an interactive model using the viewer generator and also being able to use them on phones and tablets meant that access to this information was quick and easy and the site teams expressed how helpful they were. This is just showing the, um, the piles going in the Movax and Hammer. So this has been shortened down because there were, there were quite a few that were, that were fitted on, on the line and I think some of the activities uh, with the piles were running concurrently, so it was important to see which ones were being used at which time. You get there the the um, the Movax, the, the hammer there. So the Movax, sorry, and the trailer. So the Movax is a fuser item, and the trailer was uh, an item that I modelled um, and just dropped in. So it, you, it's quite easy to put the animations together. And this is just showing the um, the new structures going in. So, so the bridge was uh, being dismantled because it's so old. Uh, there have been animals roosting, and in particular, bats, which are obviously protected. Um, so the ecology team actually approached uh, digital engineering and wanted a quick model. Uh, creating um, along with an animation to show the bat presence using a colour coded system. Obviously, the red sections are no go areas, yellow were potential roofs, and green is clear. Uh, with it being such a quick and simple process to change the material properties of the bridge beams, I was able to quickly create a model and animation that clearly showed which parts of the bridge could be worked on without disturbing the bats. Um, and, and this literally, this, this entire um, process took probably an hour or two, um, you know, just to quickly change the materials check it with the ecology team um, and create the fly through and the viewer. Um, really, really straightforward process. And uh, yeah, it's a very nice process. With the um, construction programme having uh, been put together at this point, there was a requirement for the planning team to be able to have the programme validated and look for any issues with the sequence. It was a straightforward process to bring the programme in XML format directly into Fuser and associate the task with the geometry and then create the subsequent animations to clearly show the sequence. Again, there was also the added benefit of the viewer creation tool within the software that allowed the entire model and sequence to be exported as an EXE file. Uh, which not only took the 3D geometry but also the program, uh, allowing the users to adjust the date, take measurements, and annotate. It also became really useful for members of the team to take their own screenshots uh, for their own communications. There's also uh, um, a quick extract after this showing um, the ALO hoarding line and the activities that would be occurring while trains were running down the track, and obviously that was key from a safety perspective. I think that's going to come in just a second. So I'm surprised that some train cranes don't move this quickly, um, but it was uh, it was really really useful to show the um, the sequence.
So this is the um, ALO, so ALO is all lines open. So it's just to show some of the activities and obviously the trains whizzing up and down the track with the ALO hoarding line in place. And again, the, the context environment there, so that the houses in the background, um, a lot of those came off 3D warehouse, a lot of them were just easily put together and sketched up. So this particular animation, where the works involved um, regular transport of the dismantled components along a public highway, it was felt that our animation would really help local authority and the wider team to understand the process. So using InfoWorks, um, I created a larger tile with the roads accurately located in place. It's not very easy to do roads in railway. Well, I found it particularly difficult. Uh, with these that Fuser um, can accept an FBX file, it was really straightforward to drop in. I mean, this is a very large FBX, this is a very large tile taken from InfoWorks, uh, but it drops into Fuser without any problems and, and the software handles it. It doesn't lag, it seems to, uh, to cope with it really well. So as you can see, Fuser has really helped deliver uh, many of the digital engineering outputs on this project. I found the software straightforward to use and I find the user interface to be very, very easy. Combined with the excellent support I've received from Grace, Amy, Happy and the rest of the team, it's meant that the learning curve has been relatively painless. It's also been good fun to use, especially the VR aspects, watching some of the site team hit the deck when stood next to a virtual operating excavator. I really think that the viewer generator in particular is a real gem, which I think has much more potential than I've been able to sort of utilise it for and perhaps display in this video, but it is a, it's a really, really good feature of this software. That concludes the presentation. I hope it was useful and thank you very much for your time.